Hello and thank you for watching this next video, another multiple regression uh, problem. This time we're going to look at how we can use this regression methodology uh, to deal with exactly the same type of ANOVA problems that we looked at in module 13. So here I've pulled, uh, I've copied a problem out of module 13 so that you can go and compare it with our results. Um, from that problem. In this one we had a, a scenario where we had different students and different majors complaining or bragging about how difficult their field of study is. So we used as a proxy of difficulty the number of hours of study that um, that they, they, they do. So more hours spent studying is a proxy for being more difficult. Uh, so when we looked at this data set in, in uh, problem 13, 13.1b, we had three fields of study. We had accounting, we had physics, and we had uh, sociology. And there we had so many sample, so many observations in each of those samples, and we'd calculated x bar A, x bar B, x bar C, and then we were testing this hypothesis: is A equal to B equal to C, uh, or not all are equal? A little messy up in the corner there. Not all of these are equal. So we had done an, an ANOVA exercise. We calculated sum of squares treatment and all of this, and we had an F test to determine whether or not we had evidence to show that these uh, were equal or not. So how can we do this using this regression methodology? Well, it requires the use of our dummy variables, our categorical variables. So in this exercise, the, often the, the hardest part is, is identifying, okay, well, what is our dependent variable and, and what are our independent variables? So in this case, when we're looking at the hours spent studying by discipline or by major, well, our dependent variable is the number of hours spent studying, and we believe that to be dependent on which field of study you're in. So if we have three levels, we have accounting, we have physics, and we have sociology, so we have these three levels of this categorical variable, I need to define two dummy variables. And so here we have x1 and x2. Physics and sociology are our two dummy variables, which means then that accounting is our base case. So what this is going to mean then is the interpretation of these coefficients that we're going to estimate, that tells us the difference in average number of hours spent studying in the, in the relative field of study compared to accounting, so compared to the base case. So if I write this out, let's say for accounting. So our expected value of y, so if our base case is accounting, it means that physics is zero, takes the value of zero. Sociology also takes the value of zero. So our expected value is simply beta zero. And so what is our predicted value going to be for that, y hat? Well, then that's just gonna be b zero. So what this is telling us is that, well, this is my point estimate for the average number of hours spent studying in accounting. So in the notation that we've used that would be similar to our ANOVA, our module 13, this B0, well, this is just simply X bar for accounting. Now, if we do the same exercise for physics, so the expected value, so now let's clean this up again. So now sociology takes a value of zero. And so our expected value now is going to be beta zero and if this has a value of one, it'll be beta zero plus beta one. So our point estimate will be b zero plus b one, and this is effectively x bar p for physics. So it's the sum of those two, two terms, which now hopefully makes it clear that b one is just that marginal difference between physics and accounting, always relative to the one that we've defined as our base case. Sociology, this one will be similar. Expected value there. So again, physics, this one now takes the value of zero. And we're looking at sociology, so physics disappears. And here we have then beta zero plus beta two. So our point estimate, B zero plus B two. And that's now X bar 
uh, S for sociology. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we have our three sample values as denoted in this methodology by those parameter estimates beta 1, beta 2, beta, uh, just beta 1 and beta 2. And those tell us the difference relative to uh, our base case scenario. So let's, um, let's move on here. So here we have our regression output, and we have all of the same output regardless of the type of, of exercise that we're doing. We have all of our R squared, they're all pretty low, even an adjusted R squared is negative. Uh, so that's uh, not a lot of relationship here. Uh, our ANOVA, if, uh, if you were to go back to the original problem, is it 13.1b, uh, you would see this ANOVA is exactly the same as the ANOVA that we had produced in 13.1b. Uh, everything here is going to be the same. Now what we see is our regression output. So here, if I take, so part A, we're writing out our estimated regression equation. Well, this is just y hat is equal to, here's that coefficient, 3.38 minus 0.61 on physics. I'll just abbreviate it with P just to keep it short. And I'll just do one decimal actually. I'm just going to keep this a little bit tidier looking. Uh, 0.6P minus 0.3S. So there's our estimated regression equation. So each of those coefficients, the 0.6 and the 0.3, those tell us the difference in the average number of hours studying between physics and accounting is this one, and 0.3 is the difference between uh, students who studied sociology, relative always to the base case accounting. So if we look at um, performing some tests, so here we've done our, our interpretation part B, according to this uh, regression, this estimated regression equation, uh, on average, students who study physics, so if this is a, a 1 and S is a 0, uh, they study on average 0.6 hours less than somebody in accounting. And if we look at sociology, uh, they study on average uh, 0.3 hours less than somebody who studies accounting. Now, of course, the next question is, well, are these statistically significant, these differences? So what we would want to do is look for the difference between the expected value for accounting and the expected value for physics. Is that difference equal to zero? So in other words, if uh, we're comparing accounting versus physics, well, we know that for accounting, here's our expected value here. This is just beta zero. And for accounting and physics to be the same, it means that beta zero uh, minus physics beta 0 plus beta 1, it means that that difference between the expected value for accounting and the expected value for physics, just as we've defined up here, that would be equal to 0. Well, of course, beta 0 minus beta 0, they disappear. So this is simply a test to see is beta 1 equal to 0. So if this coefficient is not statistically different from zero, then it implies that there is no difference between physics and accounting. Similarly, if we compare accounting versus sociology, so now again it's accounting, which is beta zero minus sociology, beta zero and beta two. If those are equal to, if that difference is equal to zero, then that means there's no difference between accounting uh, and sociology. And so again, beta 0 minus beta 0 is gone, and we have beta 2 is equal to 0. And of course, if beta 1 and beta 2 are equal to each other, then they, we have no reason to believe there's a difference between physics and sociology either. So what this all boils down to is that if we can develop a test that shows beta 1 is equal to 0, beta 2 is equal to 0 as well. So both of these coefficients are equal to 0, this one and this one. That means that individually, accounting versus physics, no difference. Accounting versus science, if that's equal to 0, no difference. 
and if beta 1 and beta 2 are also equal, then there's no difference between physics and sociology. So here we have our alternative, uh, sorry, our null hypotheses. If beta 1 is equal to beta 2, if we look at just this point, if beta 1 is equal to beta 2, no difference between physics and sociology. If they're all equal to zero, then none of them are different from accounting. So this gives us our F test, not all are zero. And so this is exactly analogous now to what we did in module 13, mu 1 equals to mu 2 equals to mu 3, not all are equal. So in this case, if we fail to reject, not all of them are equal, okay, then we would do a Fisher's LSD to identify where the difference exists. This one here now, now we're testing those parameters, are they equal to zero? Because remember, those parameters are telling us the marginal difference between each level of that categorical relative to the base case. So again, if beta one is zero, then there's no difference between accounting and physics. If beta two is zero, no difference between accounting and sociology. If beta one and beta two are equal, no difference between physics and sociology. So if all three of those are equal to zero, it's exactly the same as saying all of those means are equal. Okay, so it's a very, it's a slightly different methodological approach to doing uh, the same type of problem. So here we have all of our coefficients. Here we can look at our uh, p-value for this, our f-test, and here we can see we have insufficient evidence to reject that null hypothesis, which means that these two coefficients are effectively zero, which means that this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. If those are both fundamentally equal to zero, then it doesn't make a difference if the dummy is zero or one. In either case, if the coefficients are not statistically different from zero, it doesn't matter if you're a physics student, it doesn't matter if you're a sociology student, all of your uh, hours spent studying in each discipline, you're all spending on average the same amount of hours spent studying, which is our proxy for level of difficulty. So we can say whatever you're studying, accounting, physics, and sociology, it's all the same level of difficulty. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we reject our p-values here. <coughs> this one we do reject on the intercept. All that's saying is that at least the, uh, the average number of hours that the accountants are spending uh, studying, it is different from zero. So we have evidence to show that they are studying a positive amount. So that, that value is statistically different from zero. And then these are those individual coefficients. So we have the, the p-value on physics. So that's just for this test. So physics is not different. And sociology, that's the p-value for this test. Sociology is not different. Okay, and so that's all there is to it. Hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. It's um, an interesting sort of crossover from multiple regression, categorical vari variables, and the SANOVA exercise that we did uh, back in module 13. So hopefully it helps maybe connect some dots uh, and, and make things a little bit more clear. In any case, enough babbling. Uh, that's it for this problem. I'll do one more problem uh, with an ANOVA type of uh, exercise, and then now uh, we'll be uh, pretty well done for module 15, I think. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye bye.